Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our immersive engineering tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be talking about all things fluid handling. So immersive engineering adds a couple of different ways to handle fluids. We're going to talk about the fluid pump and its many uses, fluid pipes, uh, and the very cheapest fluid storage in the mod, the wooden barrel, and then the metal barrel. We're also going to show the, uh, show you how to use them in conjunction with the fluid tank that we talked about uh, before. So, uh, let's get into it, shall we? So the main block that manages fluids in immersive engineering is the fluid pump. If you look at the tooltip at the bottom right, you can see that it runs, it stores 8000 RF internally. It does, of course, need power. Power goes in through the top, and then fluids are handled through the bottom and the sides. Okay? You can, of course, whack it with an engineer's hammer to set a blue input side or an orange output side. And I do believe that the bottom of the device is by default an input side. So you can feel free to place it on top of something. It will always be an input side. So let's see how to craft it. Now to craft the fluid pump, we need to craft these two things first. First of all is the fluid pipe, which, as you may imagine, is how it, you transfer the fluids around with immersive engineering. So fluid pipes are pretty darn good. They're pretty cool. I like them. And let's see how to craft them. You craft them using four iron ingots and four iron plates, which unless you're playing a pack like Revolution where the iron plates are more expensive if you use a hammer, uh, you can just hammer four iron uh, ingots into plates and then this costs eight iron ingots, which gives you eight pipes. So you're essentially paying one iron ingot per block of uh, a fluid pipe per block of, of travel. So they're, they're not that expensive, they're pretty cool. And later on in immersive engineering, when it lets you get crazy amounts of resources, these are pretty darn inexpensive uh, all, all around. Uh, early in the game, you might want to use a different mods pipes just because they're cheaper, like cobblestone fluid pipes from Buildcraft, but these are cool. I like these fluid pipes. They connect in all kinds of different ways, and they look really good when they turn corners and, and make rounds and stuff. And if you place a single bl a pipe block, it just looks like this little cube. But as you add pipes onto it, 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 it takes a, a shape. So they, they're pretty cool. They look nice. Okay, so the next piece we need to make the fluid pump is a, a, a basic crafting component of a lot of things in the mod. The iron mechanical component. So this is crafted with a single uh, copper ingot and then four iron ingots in the corners. It gives you an iron mechanical component. And these things are used to craft all kinds of stuff. If we hit uh, U on it, we can see you use it to craft that and this and these. There's pages of all these things that you need these mechanical components for. So you'll be seeing a lot of them in crafting recipes for uh, immersive engineering. Now, once you have those things, you can go and craft your fluid pump. Fluid pump is crafted with three fluid pipes an iron mechanical component, and three iron ingots. So again, it's really not that expensive, you know, mostly iron. Um, and there you go, your fluid pump, which I think looks really cute, uh, for starters. It just looks good. Okay, then let's take a look at the other crafting recipes for these things, and uh, then we'll get into messing around with some fluids. So the barrels are a cheap and easy method of storing some fluids. Um, I believe, I know the wooden barrel stores 12,000, millibuckets. I don't know if the metal barrel store, stores more or if it's the same capacity. The difference between these is that you can't store lava or other hot fluids in the wooden barrel for obvious reasons, but you can do it in the metal barrel. The other great thing about these two uh, blocks is that they, they keep their fluid when you break them. So you can't hammer the sides on these. Um, input and output is only through the top and the bottom. But uh, you can break them and they keep the fluid. And so the wooden barrel especially is a very cheap portable method of, of carrying large amounts of fluids around. So the wooden barrel is crafted using five treated wood planks and three treated wood slabs. And the metal barrel is crafted using eight sheet metal blocks. So it's definitely the more expensive one. Um, but, you know, it's made out of metal. So before we get into all this... Uh, uh, the, the fluid pumps and stuff here. Let's, let me just place these two barrels down and, and we'll just sort of show you what I'm talking about here. So if I right click this with some water, it can store 12,000 millibuckets of water. And the same uh, as this one, it can store 12,000 millibuckets. And then if I take and we go in here to tools and I grab an iron axe and then I shift myself out of 
creative mode. Nope. Wait, what? It won't let me for some reason. That's weird. Maybe if I just hold the axe a little bit. No, never mind. So I can't do it. For some reason, it won't let me go get out of creative. Not really sure why. I usually can do that. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can break these things and keep the contents. This one can store lava. That's the basic gist. Um, and they're, they're kind of useful as buffers for, for things because you can input item uh, fluids to the top and output to the bottom or vice versa. Anyway, let's get into the main show, the fluid pump, the fluid pipes, and uh, messing around with fluids. First things first, the fluid pump can pump fluid. Uh, the simplest method that you can, simplest way to use the fluid pump is to place it over top of some water. Okay, if I place this pump over top of some water and I uh, give it some power and we're going to whack the side into an output and then we're going to run some pipe up the tank here because of course these tanks only store through the top. Okay, once I give this some power, come on, connect already, oh, you have to put a lever on these. The, uh, the fluid pump will activates via a redstone signal. Pretty sure this works. Pretty sure this works. Yeah, there we go. There's some water going into the fluid tank. See it? See the little blue meter? Yeah, if I hold this in my hand, you can see it. 22,000, 23,000, 24,000, 25,000. About a thousand millibuckets a second. It's about one bucket a second coming out of this uh, fluid pump. Pretty nice. That's the simplest way to pump water. And you can notice. It doesn't actually mess around with the surface of the water, so uh, you don't got to worry about lag or anything or draining the, the water source or anything. So the fluid pump's actually a really nice way to, uh, to pump water, in my opinion. However, the fluid pump doesn't just pump water, it also does other things. First things first, I'm going to demonstrate how to get stuff out of this uh, fluid tank. I talked about this briefly before, but the way that you do that, if I connect this pipe, and the fluid pipe will only connect to stuff that it connects to. If I place a lever on this, we can offload this fluid into this tank over here. Okay, so this is the the main thing that you do in this mod to mess to transfer fluids around. Most things will require a lever. Okay. Okay. And of course, if I wanted to, we could place this a couple blocks higher up in the air, just so you can see. There's the output. So you could output out the side of this thing into, I don't know, another barrel. But this one, these barrels do not require redstone signals. In fact, you can't even put a lever on it. So there we go. Those barrels, pretty good for buffers, I think, if I'm going to run a fluid into a working machine. All right, so that's how you can use the fluid pump to pump water. But there's so much more that the fluid pump does. Okay. You'll use the fluid pump to get fluids out of other machines uh, from immersive engineering and other stuff. So one of the uh, first things that I will end up doing with it once I get around to making it in my survival world is to use the coke oven. Okay. Now, not the coke oven. Yes, the coke oven. So let me just quickly build a coke oven. whack it. Okay. Now you want to get some actual uh, creosote oil in here. So I'm just going to grab logs. Chuck them in. And that'll give me some creosote oil. I should have done that sooner. Now, with the coke oven and other things, you might want to actually get the creosote oil out of this thing and put it in storage, like one of these uh, barrels. However, it, you can't just take the barrel and like stick it on the side of the machine, okay? It doesn't work that way. Another way it doesn't work is, um, oops, you can't just take the fluid pipes, attach them to the side of the coke oven, and get the fluid to go into, uh, into the barrel. It actually doesn't work. So when this thing burns down, 
uh, you'll be able to see it. There's, there'll be some fluid in here. Uh, it's not going to go into the barrel. And there we go. So there's 250 creosote oil in here. Uh, it's not going into the barrel. Putting a lever on this coke, uh, coke oven does nothing. Um, how do you get it into this barrel? Well, the answer is you use the fluid pump. If I stick a fluid pump right dead center on top of this thing, remember there's an input on the bottom, and then I hook this up to some power. So we'll just I'll run this wire over here. Oh, it's too far away. So we need to run another thing. Right there. So I've given it some power. It's got 8,000 RF stored. Okay. So now we whack the side till it turns orange, and then run some pipe. Come on, let me run some pipe. There we go. Now, there's another important thing about this fluid pipe is that if you take an engineer's hammer and you right-click it, you can right-click on these little connection points. So if I do that, it can actually get rid of it. So if your fluid pipe ever connects to something that you don't want it to connect to, you can just right-click that connection with your hammer and it goes away. And you can see the little box there. If I right-clicked it again, it would come back. If I can get rid of it, because I don't want it to do that. Now we've got like 500 millibuckets of creosote oil in here. We want to put it into this barrel. You can put it in a wooden barrel as well. It doesn't have to be metal. All we have to do is put a lever on this flute pump. Come on. I have to hold shift or it won't let me do it. Now we have 750 millibuckets of creosote oil in our barrel. And as long as that remains on, it's not going to drain power unless it does an actual operation. Then it, all the creosote oil that ends up in this coke oven will end up in this barrel. Or if we had a lot of coke oven set up, we could put it into a fluid tank. But as you can see, we set up this fluid pump not, not too long ago, and it's already just about filled this fluid tank. There's already uh, 300,000 millibuckets in there. So these fluid pumps are pretty darn nice for pumping water. They can also pump other fluids, for example. Let's go ahead and try and pump some lava, yeah? I'm just going to dig some holes in the ground, put some lava sources in. place a wooden plank next to it. Not the smartest thing that you can do, but it was only there for a moment. Put an output, put some fluid pipe down, metal barrel. Has to be metal, can't be wood. <laughs> Pop that there, wire this together with that one. It's got its power. Now we'll put a lever on it, tip it on. Does it work? Yes, it do. However, it does replace it with cobblestone. Okay, so unlike water, you cannot pump lava infinitely. So don't think that the, that the fluid pump is an infinite source of, la of lava. However, it also, as you can see, because it replaces it with cobblestone, is actually pretty good on lag. It won't create lag because you won't have a bunch of lava um, flowing around like if you, you place this in the nether. It replaces the blocks that it pumps out with cobblestone which is pretty cool. So that's awesome. So rather than pay a whole bunch of resources for something like the, um, what was it called? The Ender Thermic Pump that did this, you just use the fluid pump. It's pretty sweet. It's so dark. It's supposed to be nice and bright. So fluid handling in this mod is pretty cool. Uh, anytime that you have a machine or something that has one of these little connections on it, and it's designed to work with fluids. You can use fluid pipes. And, uh, you know, if something's got a fluid in it, connect a fluid pipe to it. If it doesn't work, if you can't get the fluid out, put a fluid pump on it. I like the fluid pump quite a bit. Easy to use. Powerful. Nice. So, that's pretty much it for this episode. Talking about fluid ha basic fluid handling. We're getting close to being able to... I'm getting close to being able to show you the coolest system I got set up over there. The next thing we're going to end up talk we're going to talk about our uh, conveyor belts, and we're going to um, show off the first uh, you know machine that uh, we can actually use our fluid tank with creosote oil. I'm going to show off the uh, assembly. So in the next episode, you'll get to see what I built over there, and uh, so stay tuned for that. I think it's a pretty cool setup.
I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.